Welcome back to Gun and Draw TV. Today we're going to be talking about bluing at home. So I'm actually going to use a process that's called niter bluing that uh, will blue a gun on your stove top. So this is actually a Star Super B. I've taken it apart. I've taken all the um, springs, anything that shouldn't get blued out. Because obviously if you heat up your springs they're no longer going to be springy. So I've gotten it all apart. As you can see, it's got some blue on the side, but like parts of the frame, front of the grip is completely virgin. There's, there's no finish left. Got all the small parts out. I put everything through the um, ultrasonic cleaner and then use some simple green to get all the grease off. So at this point, we need to get all the old bluing off. What I'm going to use to do that is a shitty plastic bucket. all my parts in here. Now we have all our parts in our plastic bucket and we're just going to use regular household vinegar. We want to get about half and half to that. So I'm about there. So half vinegar, I'm going to top this off with water and then we're pretty much just going to let this sit for about half an hour to 90 minutes, somewhere in there. We want to get all the blue off. So let me get some water in here. So checking back in, this has only been five minutes, but you can see the bluing is coming right off. So I'm not sure if this will take a whole 90 minutes to get down there, but uh, I'm just going to keep letting this sit. You can see some parts still have, especially the frame, still have some bluing still on them. So so now my parts have been uh, pretty much stripped of all their bluing. They've got some funk on them still. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take them out of the vinegar solution. And then I'm going to boil them in some plain tap water for about 20 minutes. So the parts have been boiling for about 20 minutes or so. So any red rust has been converted to black rust. It should pretty much finish stabilizing the metal. So next I'm going to pull them out real fast and get the water off them. Probably want decent tongs for this step because it's a pain in the ass. But the parts are at boiling temperature so if you notice once you pull them out they pretty much almost dry off on themselves. There we have it. All our parts are now out and I'm just going to towel them off real fast and make sure they're really dry. So we took our parts, we uh, boiled them in water, air dried them, made sure they're super dry, and then I went through and uh, pretty much buffed, polished, tried to get some of the pitting and wear in the metal. I left some. It's not a huge deal. This isn't a super fine gun, um, but used some sandpaper and kind of cleaned up some of the some of the wear. I didn't I didn't do a super good job, but it's kind of a shitty gun. So at this point, now the next step is we need to re-blue it. So I'm going to use stump remover and I'm going to melt that in this pan and then uh, we're going to heat up the uh, gun and we'll go through and uh, re-blue it. So I put my stump remover in my pan Now I'm just heating it slowly to get it to melt and in theory we'll be able to blue pretty soon. So after probably an hour of screwing around, we finally have the stump remover kind of melted. It keeps warming over on the top. I think I use a little too wide of a pan to keep it liquid the whole way through. But I'm going to start uh, slowly putting in all the bits and pieces. We're going to set a timer for about half an hour and we'll check on the pieces. So you can see they've been in there about 20 minutes now. The bubbles finally stopped and you can see how the parts are taken almost like a mirror, shiny, kind of like those cheap knives you get that have a rainbow color to them. We've got that right now, but they're starting to get a nice darker blue to them. 
So we'll wait another 10 minutes, check them out, see if we like how they look. So I finally, uh, it probably took like an hour rather than the half an hour. I think I was actually uh, cooking it a little too low so it wasn't bluing because it's a time and a temperature process, the coloring of the metal. So I took it out, I quenched it in water, both to cool the parts and to get all the salt off them. Now I have to get the water off, so I covered everything in WD-40, which is water displacing 40. That's really the idea behind it. So now I've got everything, should be good to go. So I did forget one last step. In this case, this gun has little dots that show the safety and there's two dots on the sight here so those obviously the paint is no longer there after the bluing process so i'm just using a little drill bit to make sure that the holes are cleaned out and then i'm just going to use a toothpick to dab a little bit of nail polish in there and and recolor those but after that the gun should be all set so i'm i'm back outside now with the gun all set um, i even blued the magazine cap and as you can see the bluing turned out pretty good I did screw this up I broke my punch and left a couple marks here but that's not a huge deal um, this gun was quite a nightmare to assemble and disassemble so I'm surprised I didn't damage more but for uh, doing it in my kitchen with some stump killer I think it turned out very nice um, I will say if you do it make sure you have decent punches and a decent vice you don't want that to happen and then uh, I think when I do it again, I'll use some hanger, pieces of cut up hanger, rather than tongs, because the tongs did make some little marks and stuff from handling. So, but other than that, you know, it looks really nice. You can see it's got a nice deep bluing that looks really sharp. So if you want to try this at home, you got most of the steps, pretty much you're just gonna soak it uh, in degreaser, get all the grease off, then you're going to go through and uh, dunk it in some half vinegar, half water, essentially gun douche. Get the bluing off. Then you're going to do your metal prep. For this, I didn't really do that much. Just hit it with a little bit of sandpaper, polished the little pieces with a Dremel. And then uh, you're going to blue it for... It ended up taking me closer to an hour, hour and a half in the bluing solution before I got what I liked. But I think the heat was a bit low. And then uh, quench it in water to get the salt out. I did screw that step up. There's a there's a hole in this back um, strap for the spring, and that hole ended up being full of salt because I didn't uh, I didn't notice it, and it must have had some salt in it when it went in the water quench. Well, a little bit of salt will come out, but when it's a sealed tube, that salt just solidified, so I had to kind of drill it out and rinse it out. But then uh, after you take it out of the water, you just just cover it in WD-40 to get all that water off and kind of cure the blue. And then uh, after about half an hour, you can put the gun back together. And like I said, this one turned out really nice. So uh, if you try something, make sure you make a video and you know comment to this video. Let me know how it turns out. Obviously, it's dangerous. Be very careful. Don't get any water near the hot salt. It'll kind of explode all over you. And it is you know four or five hundred degree salt. So. Be very careful, wear long sleeves, safety glasses, all that stuff. But, you know, maybe if, you, if you're extra careful, get a turkey fryer, do it outside. I think if I do it again, I'll do that because when the salt was cooling, it made a lot of pinging and was shooting stuff out. So uh, I'm not sure if that was a good idea uh, to do in the house as far as all the instructions I had said, said to do it in the house. But I think next time I'll use a turkey fryer. But for Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a little bit about bluing at home. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.